happy with the pilot I was disappointed to see that one thumbs down like whoever you are if you would just come out with the real thumbs down please stand up I don't know what it takes to make you happy because it's a one thumbs down in every video we release so the way Joe kind of found me was he was checking out a uh, the male version of the sports illustrated swimsuit catalog and bam there I was on the cover I think he kind of found me up so JB called me up before we went out to Illinois and was like, Bryce, you might want to think about climbing up a few hills or maybe hitting an elliptical or two at the gym before we get out there. I pulled up his Instagram and I looked at him and I said, I'm good. I mean, I'm ripped. I'm a husky rip. Yeah, um, I think the show's coming along pretty well. Some people went off script. Little known fact about me, Daniel Boone, Davy Crockett, their lives were loosely based around my own. So that's kind of what I was envisioning. It just didn't get portrayed when John and Bryce and the rest came through. I mean, I'm not getting a lot of followers on my Instagram. I assume it's because somebody leaked a photo of me in like tidy whities. <laughs> yeah, man! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that thing recording? Boom! Of course it's recorded. Yeah, actually, yeah, it's hard to want to go unfollowed you. <laughs> Looking back in hindsight, that's probably where the we got the thumbs down on the pilot was from Brian because we did cut some of his footage. I'm not so sure how he took that. How's the how's the thing? Yeah, it's, it's a real real hurt. It hurts my. <laughs> <laughs> I sold it's not good. I, I think it's kind of catchy. <laughs> it is kind of catchy. Well, after the after my friends saw the first one, they were like, Joe Green. Uh. <laughs> I knew I could live off ramen because if there's one thing I know, I can make some ramen. Hashtag boom, son. Catchphrase by John. Yes. Yeah. I think if Sacagawea was alive today, she'd find me highly attractive and desired. I mean, if you break it down, I'm a provider, I'm a hunter, and I'm a pretty manly man. Just turning off to our training ground. This is a, a typical English small holding farm. It runs to about 400 acres. And uh, in the game shooting season, there's a, a really nice little shoot goes here. Uh, I'll bring Ted up in the beating line. I'm very lucky that I can come up here and do some training with him. It's nice and quiet. And there's a little bit of scent around. There's still a few birds left over from last year. It's just a really nice place to come and do some training. Welcome back for another episode of The Huntsman. As you can see, we're picking right up where we left off last week, where Nick and Ted are hitting the field. But before we join them, let me take a moment and share more about their backstory. Now, Nick is a well-known and respected videographer and photographer in his own right within the United Kingdom. Of course, his trusty sidekick, Ted, is beloved by fans and arguably has the biggest hits and following of anybody within the cast. A big reason we brought them on was we felt like they had a story to share. Small game hunting within the United Kingdom has had its own challenges and Nick has been there trying to bring light to it and show the goodness of it. So we thought there was a story to be shared coupled with the fact that he was doing the training of his dog and taking the dog to the field. So he's going to walk us through a typical cycle of training the dog up for the season, preparing the dog for the season, and then executing some successful hunts for both pheasant and rabbit. Now Powell Walver is another guy you're going to meet in a few moments. 
We came across Paul when we were looking for talent. We were casting a pretty wide net, and we had filters out there within the social media realms. We were hitting those streets, trying to see who may have something to bring to the show. Having over 1 million views, Paul quickly fell within our search criteria, but the question was, would he respond? And he did. I like to think that it was the Maryland connection that we had, but when he responded back, we started talking quickly. He learned more about what we were trying to accomplish as Sons of Paul and as the Huntsman, and subsequently signed on. Now, why he didn't have 1 million views within the turkey realm, I don't know. That's going to be for you guys to decide. So without further ado, let's hit the field and join these guys. So we've arrived at our training ground now, um, and we're gonna try and simulate what's gonna happen when we get up onto the rabbits up on the moors. And obviously, I don't wanna use a, a gun, Ted's fine with a gun. Um, so we use one of these things. This is called a dummy launcher. Uh, it's actually used mainly for firing a rubber dummy, uh, which simulates the, the going away of a, of a bird that you've shot, and obviously then you send the dog for the retrieve. But I've got a tennis ball adapter which is really useful for trying to simulate a rat shot rabbit. And what we do is we put a tennis ball in the end, uses two two blanks, and as we fire it, it actually lays shot scent down onto the tennis ball, and that lays a line for the dogs to follow. It's a really good way of simulating a day's rabbit shooting. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna hunt Ted up, we've got a little bit of a, a wood behind us. We're gonna hunt him up behind there, simulate a flush. I'm obviously gonna fire the the dummy and the tennis ball and uh, hopefully send him out for it and what he'll do hopefully is find the area where the tennis ball first hit the ground and then follow that shot scent and what we do we build this up gradually and gradually to the point where we then use some cold game I haven't got a rabbit I've actually got a partridge I'll use and then we'll drag a line out um, for the dog to follow that scent line even further out so I'll get him out and uh, see how we go So I'm feeling just a little bit of pressure to get some footage for the show at this point. I heard Shelby and Austin were in Canada and just shot a beautiful bear. I understand Travis is in Kansas slaying turkeys left and right. So yeah, I'm feeling just a little pressure at this point. So I decided to plan my first ever turkey hunt. I contacted a friend of mine and he agreed to go with me to Ohio to our lease for the last weekend of the turkey season. On Friday, my friend and I went out and we did some scouting and we walked a couple of, a couple of the properties, did some calling, uh, unfortunately did not locate any birds that evening, so we're going to stick with, with the plan and that was to be at that 29 acre property first thing in the morning on Saturday. So we arrived, beautiful day, picture perfect, blue skies, low wind just gorgeous out. So we, we decided to go ahead and start letting some calls out to see what would happen. And as luck would have it, we had three gobblers within the first 15 minutes or so answering us. Uh, but unfortunately, the gobbler that was to our west was on the other side of a, a hayfield, and this hayfield was very tall, it was like three feet tall, very thick, 
and we felt there was just no way this turkey was going to come across this field to investigate to see what we were doing. So we arrived at the next property and we found a nice field, low cut grass, a perfect scenario to set up a decoy. So we got the decoy set out. We had to trim a bunch of branches along the wood line so we could get settled in there and get nestled so uh, we, we were comfortable. And we proceeded to call for about an hour, hour and a half. Unfortunately, we just didn't get any birds to answer us. We didn't see any birds, but it just was, it wasn't a total loss. It was just an absolute beautiful day. No mosquitoes, low humidity, just a perfect day to be outside. Guys, we are in our last 20 minutes hunting with marshland outfitters up here in Saskatchewan, Canada, um, having an awesome time. We have like 20 minutes of daylight left, so it's 9 o'clock now. It gets dark here about like 9.25. Awesome week, awesome kill the bear on Monday on our first day for, to hunt up here. And, uh, it was the best hunt of my life, and I wasn't even the one hunting, so I'm really happy for him. He has been smiling ever since. So awesome time. Thank you Ryan Marsh and Marshland Outfitters for everything. It's, it's been a dream so hopefully hopefully we get one for me but if not I'm just as happy. I love coming out here and just I love looking up and there's one you know where like you can because you can barely hear them. They're awesome animals so it's just really cool to see them everywhere but awesome times. Stay tuned with my kill.
The Sons of Fall staff and cast proudly work with the finest in the industry. German precision optics, tough, technical, brilliant. Hoyt bows, get serious, get Hoyt. Badlands backpacks, become a hide and seek master. Victory archery, the carbon arrow experts. Fourth arrow, when precision, strength, and performance are everything. So, uh, we just shot at this chocolate bear that came out of nowhere. Like, I mean, walked down the, the, uh, the edge of the forest and he came down this trail, like, right in front of us and, and walked back off. And I was, like, just sitting there praying, like, please go back, please go back. And he did. I don't know how the shot was because it, like, hit, it looked like it almost hit the ground. I don't even know if I shot him. That's why I'm, like, freaking out right now. He didn't. Ear, I didn't hear him crash or anything. He's literally just gone. So we're gonna walk away from Marshall Beer in about five minutes. We're waiting to see if like anything, if there's any blood on the arrow or any like, I shot a fixed blade so maybe there's some hair on it or something. I don't know, but. <sighs> Epic. I am praying so hard that this comes through, oh my gosh. That was the most beautiful bear. I mean, of course, besides all students, but this was, that was a gorgeous chocolate bear, like, out of nowhere, 925, our last, our last day of hunting here in Canada, like, I just, I hope it comes through. I'm hoping it comes a good shot, I don't know. Like, I don't know. So there was a lesson learned though during this hunt and it wasn't so much about the hunting, it was more about the filming side of it. I have a DSLR camera that I bought an accessory lens for and when videoing in autofocus, the autofocus mechanism would leave a tremendous amount of noise in the actual video. Now I didn't find this out till after the fact, so meanwhile I'm thinking I'm getting just great footage. When, be, when it all be said done, it was the worst footage I'd ever put together because of this horrible sound that the, the camera was making. Got my buddy Ray on camera back here behind me. I got my killer face mask on. Come to find out, I learned that the STM lens from Canon is ideal for these video situations. It has a virtually silent autofocus function to it. So the good thing is I learned this early in the season this year and not during prime time in deer season in the fall. So we've got a classic kind of area here where you'd find a rabbit that would just kind of hold onto the edges of this little woodland, come out and feed. So we're gonna hunt Ted down through here, about halfway down, simulate a flash and um, a shot, and then hopefully we'll get the retrieve off of the, off of the scent line. Now obviously you want the dog to hunt nice and close to us. That two fips is a, is a turn whistle for us. Okay, that was perfect. So what we've got, we've got Ted there, absolutely stopped the flush. And that allowed me a free shot of the pretend rabbit. Never be too quick to send him. So what I'm hoping now is he'll follow that line the tennis ball's bounced a couple of times, so that laid a shot sent down on the ground. Get out. Nice retrieve back. Good lad. Good boy. Sit. So that's about as close as we can get to actually simulate a rabbit flushing out of some ground.
Boneyard blind, take seven. Hey, it's Boneyard. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you roll it? Yeah. Hell, you even drew plans? Look at that. Hey, you can't put that on TV. These are copyrighted. So you're only gonna do like two or three in that bottom panel. Okay. I can get used to this. You all do the work, I'll just video it. All right, August 2018. Me and Bryce's first trip out to the farm. Bryce's first hunting experience. Thought we kind of get out there, get a little jump, prepare yep, a little yep. bit. So. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. We were able to get out there, really see the lay of the land, and I was able to get the idea of like what the property in Illinois looked like. I'd never been out there before, and so that was really cool. John was able to show me around. We were out there on the tractor, sitting side by side. Uh, we rode around for a little while, um, dug up to the ground, put some of the tree stands up, and it was really cool to see like where we were going to spend two weeks out there later on in the year. All right, so August, um, I was excited. We got out there, it was warm, it was like 80 degrees outside. We were traveling around, we were on tractors. We were just having a great time. We were, you know, drinking beverages, just, you know, traveling around the area and uh, really getting to know the lay of the land. But I was thinking, this is easy. Like, I'm flying a drone around. Like, I can just sit in, like, on the front porch of the cabin and I can just fly my drone, I can track them down. I don't have to do pretty much anything, you know, I don't really have to be out there. We set up time-lapse cameras, I got a blind going up, and, uh, and then I got another shot where they were going up and down, and I was able to pretty much just chill out, you know, just have a good time, ride four-wheelers around, fly drones. It was, it was a blast. It was a blast, but little did I know what was to come. <laughs> yeah, we hung our first set. First time Bryce ever got in a tree stand yep. by himself, so we made sure he could get up in there, sure make sure out. he was comfortable, <laughs> kind of got a little game plan of where the camera's going to go, where we're going to put a lot of things, and uh, we learned a lot. We thought we had a, a game plan. A lot. Honestly, we kind of talked about this is going to happen, we're yep. going to do this, and it didn't actually work out that way when it when it came down to showtime. In the heat of the moment, things changed up a little bit. <laughs> things got a little crazy. But... Went, went, down in the, went down in the tubes. But um, um, that was the start of our learning learning experience. And we definitely had a lot of roller coaster roller rides starting at August, you yep. know, going through the end of November. It definitely did. But we got our food plots in. We were able to check out all the areas. Uh, actually, we set up a new, um, what was it, a new blind in the up on the upper lot. Um, so we got some footage of, you know, putting it up and taking it down and, uh, yeah, we learned a lot. I think it's a pretty, uh, yeah, it's a pretty amazing concept, uh, bringing huntsmen from all over the world uh, together into one series. Uh, 
I have to say I'm already inspired by the other cast members, uh, especially the guys in the US. Gives me new inputs on how I could do things, uh, and I think I'm gonna try some of the the tips I already have gotten from them. Yeah, I have never filmed to share anything. Uh, I have filmed it for myself, so I can learn from it. Uh, I can see details that I even didn't think about when I stood there with the adrenaline rushing through my body. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be a new experience for me to share. Uh, I just used it to learn from it before and this is going to be exciting. So hashtag Team Ash actually came through with a twofer. Did any of us have any doubts that was going to come about? Just like, did any of us have any doubts into Paul Wilder's ability to do turkey calling? I didn't, and now we can all see why. Beyond that, you can see our cast is expanding by the minute and by the episode. So I'm hoping you guys can join us as we add more cast in next week. But for now, you've got to meet hashtag Team Joby, John and Bryce, as they prepare for the season. Nick and Ted are already hitting the fields. Ted's pretty much ready to get out there and start hunting. Paul is ready to put the turkey season behind him, and Christian is just now starting to come onto the scene as roe deer are coming into season in Norway. So until next time, I'm Joel Port with Sons of Paul, where we're wishing you a safe and happy season. Oh, nice. Here we go. Found the bear. Do you trust me again now? <laughs> Kendra and I came out this evening and had quite the evening. My unit four, Kansas Tom, is tagged out. You know, I really didn't know how good of a shot it was until we found him and I just started like bawling my eyes out in happiness. 